In this video, I want to talk to you about how to make more money without getting any more clients. Mm -hmm. And it might be, it's a lot more simple than you think. A lot of y'all still might not do it, but I wanted to share this with you. I'm mainly making this video for my team, but maybe you'll get some value out of it too. So a lot of barbershop owners and barbers, you know, myself included, we put a lot of energy and effort into trying to get new clients in the door. Um, and while that's great, um, there is my, there might be a hidden opportunity right underneath your nose. And that is just trying to get your existing clients to come in more frequently, because if you're able to do that well, then the, you will be seeing the same people more frequently and you don't need more clients to fill those spots because it'll be the same people just coming back more regularly. And the way to do that is with rebooking. And rebooking is simply when a client finishes their appointment or even before, before they leave the shop or by the end of the day, their next appointment is pre-booked in advance. Some, some people call this pre-booking. But the idea is if they book their next appointment before the end of the day of their current appointment, then they are a rebooked client. And the reason why that's so powerful is because as you know, we, as a barber, we tend to work with mostly guys and guys tend to put off their hair. Right? They, they tend to not think about it uh, until like the day of, and they're like, I'm going to try to get a haircut today. So the problem with that is what if you're not available? that day right and you which is good right you're busy but that is a problem for the clients so you so they're gonna have two choices right they can either put off their haircut until when you're available again which means they're stretching out their haircut time or they'll go to see somebody else and a lot of people will choose to go see somebody else they might not be telling you about it but they will because at some point you're going to start to become inconvenient if you are growing right and it's going to get harder and harder to book with you. So the way around that to make more money with less clients and to make your clients' lives easier is before they leave, you set them up with their next one. And I think that there's levels of rebooking from what I've seen with myself and trying to get the barbers that work with me to do it as well. I've noticed that there's levels and it depends on where you're at. So if you are very new to the concept of rebooking and or you're not good at it and i would say that if you're booking re, if you're rebooking less than 50 percent of your clients then you i would put you in like level one or like level zero like you're just getting started so i wouldn't even pay attention to the other things that i'm trying i'm going to mention in this video until you've gotten to at least 50 percent of your clients are leaving with their next one booked and the reason why I think that's a cutoff is because, I mean, the best salons in the world are at like 60, 70, 80% rebooking. So 50 is actually quite low. And we're not experts at this either, but I've seen what works and what doesn't work, which is why I'm making this video so that hopefully you don't make the same mistakes. But if you're, and hopefully your system is telling you this, what your rebooking rate is. If not, it's one of the easier numbers to track manually. You just look at how many clients you had for the day. Whenever you book neck, whenever a client books their next one before they leave with you, then you just make a little tally mark. And at the end of the day, you just divide, okay, this is how many clients rebooked versus this is how many I saw today. And that'll give you a percentage. If it's less than 50, then keep working on it. It's normal to suck at it in the beginning. You got it. In fact, that's the prerequisite to getting better is that first you have to suck and that's normal. But I think one of the major issues with rebooking and I think just human nature in general, but especially as barbers, is that the further away the reward is from the action, the less likely the, the person is to do it. So for example, when we do a haircut and we finish the haircut, we get paid right away. We get paid for the haircut, we get paid for the tip. And then, so it's not usually hard to convince barbers that they can make more money if they can do more haircuts. But then like another thing that barbers struggle with is product sales. Well, you know, in our shop, the barbers get paid weekly. And so they, they have to wait. If they get paid a commission on their product, they have to wait sometimes a whole week before they see the result of, the, of their sale, their product sale. 
And then that it's with rebooking, it's even worse, right? Because you don't get an immediate reward when somebody rebooks. But when they come back in, so a few weeks later, you'll be glad you did it. So it, I think this is one of the reasons why barber, barbers don't understand or care about rebooking. It's one that I think they don't know how powerful it is, but also the reward that is so delayed, the, the, the gratification is so delayed that they're like, nah, I'll let, just let them do it online. And I think that online booking was one of the greatest and one of the worst things to happen to our industry. It allowed everybody to basically be able to book with us without having to call or do the back and forth text. But the problem is, is that I think you have to try a little bit harder to rebook people now because now they have the option to be like, ah, oh, you know what? I'll just do it all. Which was one of the top three, you know, excuses that we hear all the time from clients when they don't want to rebook. Well, so when you're at level, let's say level one with rebooking and you're under 50%. And by the way, hopefully your system is tracking this. If, if it's not, then you may want to consider getting a new system. But again, you can, you can uh, track this manually. It's just going to be a bit of a hassle. But rebooking is one of those things that it, it can also increase your retention. It's not a guarantee. Like you can rebook 100% of your people and then they can all no show on you. So rebooking is not like a guarantee that people will show up, but is going to increase the likelihood that they come back, right? especially if you're busy, which is we're going to get into next. But I think level one with rebooking is you're less than 50%. You're not very good or you're asking people to rebook. So it might sound something like this, right? So during their haircut, you didn't talk at all about how often they usually get their haircut. You didn't make a recommendation of based on their hairstyle, how often they should be coming in. And you didn't plant the seed that like, we could actually just do that here for you instead of like you going online to do it. And then if something comes up, you can always move it. So if you're not doing those things and you're under 50%, then I would say you've got some work to do. And when it gets, maybe you do remember to finally ask about rebooking when you get to the front desk. But by then, as soon as you take the cape off, I believe that clients are like their body's still there, but their mind is gone. Like they're on to the next thing. They're thinking about lunch or whatever they got to do when they get back to work or whatever. Right. So a lot of people that are unsuccessful with rebooking tend to wait until they get to the front desk to bring it up or don't bring it up at all. And I, you know, that's part of the reason why I'm making this video. So you guys understand how powerful this can be for you. So that would be like, I would say level one. And then when you do ask about the rebook, if you do, you're probably saying something like, do you want to set up your next one? Do you want to set up your next one? And you're making it like a yes or no question. In other words, you're making it really easy for them to say no, and which most people tend to do. And you could also think about it if you need some other motivation besides making more money. You could also think about if somebody rebooks with you in a way that's kind of giving you a compliment that, especially if they're a new client, because they are saying, I was so happy with my visit today that I want to plan my next one. So you can think about it if you need some more motivation besides making more money. Every time somebody rebooks with you is a compliment that they were happy with their service. Not always, but you can think about it that way. Same thing with product sales. Like they probably weren't coming in to the shop that day, planning on leaving with $20, $40, $60 worth of product. But they did because you did a good job educating them about product. And that is a compliment for, to you and your skills. And that is a clue. One thing that we found correlates highly with retained clients is whether they bought a product or not. Surprisingly, if, they, if clients buy products and rebook, they are more likely, you're more likely to retain them, which is ultimately the most important thing about what we do. So that was level one. Right? So level two, you're starting to get above 50%. You're starting to realize that if I wait until I get to the front desk, they're most likely going to say no. So you start getting ahead of it. And you're like, you can use the m, &M tactic. If you've never seen, uh, whatever that movie is, Eighth Mile, whatever, where he's at the, at the rap battle at the end, he brings up all the things that the guy was going to say about him. You can use that same tactic. You can say, hey, I know that you probably don't know your schedule and you prefer to book online but I've been getting really busy and I, so I'm just gonna set this up for you now and you can always cancel it if, if something comes up. So you might notice a subtle difference in the way I phrased that versus the first one in that it wasn't a question, it was assumed. This is called an assumed close in sales where we're just assuming that this is gonna happen. 
I'm gonna go ahead, because I already talked about it during the haircut, and I know that you like to get your haircut every three weeks. I'm gonna go ahead and book you three weeks from now, same day, same time. If that doesn't work for you, then you, we can just move it. No big deal. There's no, you know, in our case, there's no cancellation or no show fees. So that's an, another reason to do it, to, to put people's mind at ease. Because you have to think about why would somebody not want to rebook? Either they don't live there, so they're like, I don't even live here, I'm not coming back anyways. Or they're afraid to commit to a time because maybe the last shop they went to, they got charged a no-show fee or they got charged a cancellation fee, which isn't your fault. So if you don't do that, you could let them know. Like, hey, there's, there's no penalty if you got to move your appointment or something comes up, right? Not an invitation to no-show, but you can use those excuses because the top three excuses that, that we see are, I don't know my schedule, I'll do it online, I'll play it by ear. <laughs> I'm a last minute guy. I prefer to walk in. Like these are the things that we hear every day. It's gonna be the same five excuses, right? Um, so you can get ahead of it by using those excuses. And if you want some inspiration on who I think the best people in the world are at this, in terms of rebooking and in terms of product sales, next time you go to the doctor, just pay attention to the wording that they're using. I was at the dentist the other day. So I, I find it, very fascinating that as barbers we struggle sometimes to get people to book their next one three weeks from now and yet dentists are able to book people six months in advance how are they able to do it pay attention to the wording that they're using and the wording that i use in my example was exactly what the dentist said to me not even the dentist the dentist assistant said to me when i was still sitting in the chair getting my teeth cleaned she said we're gonna set you up six months from now. If that doesn't work for you, let us know and we'll move it. It was not a yes or no question. It was, this is going to happen. And then the same thing with product sales, right? Well, in the case of doctors, it's pharmaceuticals. But they say, I need you to take two of these per day for six weeks. Here you go. It's not like, would you like to pick up some pills today? How ridiculous would that sound? But that's what us as barbers do because we don't, but subconsciously, we don't, we don't want people to perceive us as pushy salespeople. But the reality is you're, you're not projecting the confidence so that, and they can pick up on that. A doctor sounds confident in that it's basically a prescription. Like I need to see you back in four weeks. We'll set you up at the front desk. In the meantime, here's a prescription. Take two of these for six weeks and let me know if anything changes. Did he ask you if you wanted to come back? <laughs> Did he ask you if he wanted that pill? No. He just assumed it was gonna happen. So if you're looking to make more money off less clients, then you need to start thinking about how can I get better at rebooking if you're not doing it already. If you are, awesome, good for you. And then I will say one other thing that we've kind of learned rather recently, which is that if you have high retention, which is great, you actually have to get better at rebooking. So. One of the things that I have learned is that sometimes what gets you from zero to one is does not get you from one to two. So for example, let's say you had some success with rebooking and you're starting to get busier and now you're rebooking more, let's say more than 50% of your clients and you're retaining people. Let's say your repeat client retention is, you know, 80% or more. You are not gonna be able to keep the retention at that level unless you get better at rebooking. Because what's gonna start to happen is, you're gonna start to get booked days in advance, and then weeks in advance, and then possibly months in advance. So then what you gotta have to start doing there is I think what I would call level three with rebooking, which is now you are rebooking people's next two or three appointments. You might even set them up on a standing appointment. So it's the same time, every however many weeks, we'll say three weeks. You might get them on a membership if you have that available. But the idea is you have to start planning ahead more because you might go to rebook somebody now and that week, that day that you go to rebook them is packed, which is great, that's a good sign. But now you have to get even better because otherwise you're gonna start to notice your retention drop because people wanna come back and see you, but they can't because you're busy. So you have to then think about, okay, I need to set, start setting up my next, my and that's the point that I got to when I was cutting hair. I got to the point where I was booked months in advance and I had to start setting up not just their next haircut, but their next two or three after that. 
And that takes a little bit of training because not all clients, and this is another thing is like, the clients that you start with in the beginning are gonna be, not gonna be the same clients that are with you probably six months later, a year, for the most part. Because if you, you have to think about the client's behavior. It's like, when you first started out and you had all these openings, you are gonna be getting people that are, tend to be more last minute with their haircuts. By nature, they are not people that plan their haircuts in advance, right? So their behavior either has to change by you educating them, or you will end up losing them as a client. And that, that's true at all levels because somebody, maybe you can change somebody's behavior and get them to book a few weeks in advance. But then the second you start to get really busy and start to, now you have to plan your next three, they might be like, man, <laughs> that's too much, man. I can't, I don't know if I can do that. So it's natural. Your retention will probably never be 100%, but rebooking can absolutely help keep it there. If you found this video helpful and you want to work with me and a group of barbers who is trying to make more money, join my free group. I'm going to put a link in the description below. I hope to see you there.